Okay, guys, how about we talk about the target? I was just kind of let the let the information speak for itself, but a few of you, many of you actually, have asked me to kind of interpret what I think of it. So here's my interpretation. Basically, what I've done is I've uh, here you can see it. It's on my phone. This is what I'm looking at right now. It's the same chart that you're looking at somewhere uh, in the screen. And this is how I view the projectiles through each barrel. So starting off with the smooth twist, we should bring this back in front here. Okay. With the smooth twist here, um, as expected, it shot 25 grain kings and the 34 grains, both of which I know have done sub MOA in that gun at 100 yards many, many times. Um, the Hades went flying all over the place. Got to give them an F. Um, and then knockouts and hybrids were both a B, which is decent, given that they're slug-shaped projectiles shooting out of a barrel that was absolutely not designed to shoot slugs. So what do I think of this system I put in place? Well, basically what I've done is, if it has an A, that means it either was sub-MOA or absolutely, in my opinion, has potential to be sub-MOA at 100 yards. So a few groups, maybe a little bit bigger, 1.25, but four of them were collected in one spot and then one just a little bit off to increase the group size into the B range, but I still think it's an A projectile. I still think that if you tuned the gun for that projectile, if you did your own experiments on it, if you don't did your own testing, uh, you know, using pellet lube, stuff like that, I think you could absolutely achieve sub MOA routinely at that distance. So, the smooth twist, yeah, stick with the pellets for the most part. And uh, and if you want to shoot slugs, yeah, you can do it. But I probably wouldn't reach out beyond 75 yards with the slugs. And when I say slugs, I mean hybrids and knockouts. I am not talking about Nielsen's, H&N's, or other projectiles that are absolute, complete slugs. The hybrids are somewhere between slug and um, and pellet. And so, consequently, they do quite well in pellet liners and they seem to do not, not as well in specific slug liners. And uh, that could be a function of you know their shape and how it's weighted. I really don't know much about that. Tune into Dubber's channel if you really want to know that kind of stuff because he has his thumb on that pulse a lot more than me. What I do have is the ability to see things and just see what works and use my own you know, science and experimental brain to uh, simply see what works. I don't know why um, or how, but I do know what, <laughs> that makes sense. Um, and I can kind of wrap my brain around things a little bit, but you know, full ballistics, that's, that's Matt's arena. Moving on to the next one, the STX. And this one, again, it's a pellet shooter. And it was fair with Hades, fair with all kinds of slugs, but basically, if you have an STX barrel, it's gonna be a pellet shooter, the same as the ST barrel, uh, the smooth twist barrel. Going on to slug A, which was probably my biggest surprise of the whole day. Did I hold the right side? Oh, and I even showed you guys the wrong side. The slug A, right there, um, absolutely stacked. Hades and heavies. It also did very well with uh, knockouts and pretty good with hybrids. So the slug A is designed though to shoot slugs. I'm shooting pellets and hybrid pellets and ammunition made by a pellet maker. My guess is the slug A and to a greater extent the superior heavy is gonna be a barrel you're gonna choose if you want to shoot primarily slugs. If you wanna dabble in pellets, then yeah, you can pick it up. And certainly the slug A showed a lot of potential for the 34 grain heavies, as well as the Hades. Those both did amazingly well. A's for the Hades and A's for the heavies. The other ones were pretty good, and maybe with a little experimentation you can get them better. But honestly, I think that Hades and the heavies shooting well out of this barrel is kind of a bonus, because this barrel is made for shooting slugs. And the guys at Utah Air Guns, I know they were shooting 25 Nielsen slugs, 25 caliber Nielsen slugs, out of a slug A barrel, hitting stuff at 200 plus yards. So the reality is that those really are designed for slugs and it's just a nice bonus that it stacked the heavies and stacked the Hades. And I'll be honest with you, I'm gonna experiment with that slug A barrel quite a bit and see if I can get heavies stable and screaming because I think that that could have 
real world potential for trumping the 30 caliber in competition. Three years ago, four years ago, I, I might not have even shared that information. I might have held that close, but I don't know. I just don't have that, that uh, you know, that predator nature in me anymore when it comes to competition. Um, it's more about having a good time and I like to see progression. I like to see people getting better and better. So um, yeah, the guys that come and they get 10th, 12th, 30th, 200th place, and then they come back and they, they start creeping up that ladder. That's who I'm, I'm talking to right now. That's who I, I'm thinking about while I'm filming this. Uh, moving on to the clear winner of the day was the FX Superior Barrel. And okay, tip of the hat to FX because they definitely found a way for one barrel to do it all. Um, we're talking about what? A-A-B-A-A. -A -A. The heavies was the only thing that didn't shoot great out of it. And my guess is you could even tune it for those as well. I bet it could be A across the board. I gave it A for hybrids and A for knockouts. Both the groups had four inside MOA and then one just a little bit off. Both of those groups, in my opinion, can be tuned to be supremely accurate with that barrel. The superior barrel should be the barrel that most people are looking at when they're purchasing their gun. It is the best barrel for 95, 98% of shooters. For the other two or 5%, there is the superior heavy. And I think what they've done with this is uh, they probably choked the barrel a lot, maybe increased the twist rate. In short, the superior heavy did pretty good with the pellets, given that it absolutely is not a pellet liner. This is a slug liner. Um, but it did show real promise, I think, with the knockouts. And that shouldn't be a surprise, because the knockouts are more slug-like than the hybrids. So that's no surprise. I'm really starting to think that the hybrids don't shoot so well out of slug barrels compared to regular barrels. I think that if you want to try hybrids and you have a slug barrel, you may be disappointed. They, that ammunition is fantastic for shooting out of standard air rifle barrels. And I think it's a great addition to the market because it's one of the few that can do that. Uh, knockouts also showing real potential for shooting through um, standard air rifle barrels. But the hybrids uh, seem to be almost so forgiving that they shoot well out of pretty much any air rifle barrel you send them down. So that's my take. I think the FX Superior Barrel is the superior barrel on the market right now. That's just so damn good to be able to do all that as well as it does. Um, really nice when you can when you can set out a target at 100 yards and absolutely be able to see definitive groups. I mean, with the other um, targets I had to you know show you where the group was because some uh, shots were overlapping the others. But this here, 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 here. The way it grouped them, very, very impressive. Very impressive. Um, I haven't seen a, a liner or a barrel that unfussy ever in my life. It's always been, you know, something you have to, to figure out what it wants. And it just doesn't seem to care what you shove down its throat. It's, it's going to spit it out the proper way. Um, and then one last question everyone wants to know is, what is my 30 caliber set at? Uh, the settings on it. Well, like all my impacts, this is wide open. So four bars, four plus uh, lines, just open that wide. It serves a purpose, I think, for lower energy uh, tunes, but not so much for everything that I do, which is all pretty much high power. Um, the regulator set at 95 bar. This is a Mark II impact. It was made in 2018. The barrel on this gun is a 700 millimeter STX barrel, made in 2018 as well. This is a Mark II impact, so it does not, not have the power plenum on here. And the power plenum, in my opinion, really isn't that necessary unless you really want to drive slugs fast. Um, the upgrade from Mark I to Mark II, massive, humongous performance upgrade from Mark I to Mark II. But Mark II to a power plenum Mark II, I think much less. They, the power plenum was an addition for people who want to drive slugs hard. For them, anyone who wants to shoot pellets or hybrids, the Mark II regular is just fine. If they're selling all FX with the power plenum, ah, great, more power to you. But if they're not, or if you see a Mark II uh, secondary on the market or, or used or something like that, don't hesitate to snap it up thinking that you're gonna get a lesser gun. I am never gonna put a power plenum on this gun because it's shooting so damn well 
and you don't screw with something shooting well. And this would be a point that I want to drive home. Well, let me finish talking about this first. Then I'm going to drive that point. <laughs> um, my trigger is between, like, it's pretty heavy. I like that about one and a half pounds. I'm a heavier trigger person. I don't like the super light ones. Whenever I got a Royal or a Crown, that trigger would be so damn light. Or the triggers on, on the day states, the electronic ones, it's not my cup of tea. It's too light. I like to feel hard resistance, an actual spot you butt up against before I squeeze that trigger. And when I squeeze the trigger, I don't actually pull the trigger. I squeeze my whole hand. So when my hand goes on here and I take my shot, it's this. It's not this. The hammer on here is set at uh, D. Now D doesn't mean much if you've taken out your Allen key and adjusted this part. But if you're an uh, uh, impact owner, let me show you how much movement I have right there. So what that's telling you is, is this hammer is a long way from being maxed out. That hammer is kind of just lightly touching that valving. And I think that is the secret to getting these guns shooting as well as possible. And that is to never overpower them with more air. And the way you can find that out is if you put uh, if you tune a gun with, with, you know, you got your reg set, say about 120 bar, and you max out your hammer, and your hammer maxed out gives you 900 feet per second, and then the next one down is 900 feet per second, and then the next one down is 900 feet per second, and then the, finally the next one down is at, say, 890. There's your sweet spot, right there. If you're driving more air, if you're wasting air, basically, if you're, if you're smacking that hammer, uh, the valve, excuse me, if the hammer is smacking the valve harder, then need be, you are not only wasting air, you are affecting your accuracy in a negative way. The goal is to have as much laminar flow as possible. That pellet comes out of the barrel and there's not swirling and turbulence all around it. It's nice and smooth. And when I say you can hear that, when I say when I tune a gun, I can hear if it's tuned well, that's what I'm talking about. Because turbulence creates a sound, a hiss, a higher pitch. Um, and when the gun is really tuned well, it is just a really quiet thump. Out the, out the mouth of the barrel. So there is my tuning idea and there's really what separates the groups like this from the groups like this. It'll shoot well, certainly if you overpower it, but it can be better if you tune it properly. So um, what was I talking about before? I forgot what I was talking about and had to come back to this. Oh yeah. <laughs> when you have a gun that's shooting well, for the love of Pete, don't do anything with it. Just enjoy it. Look, this gun's two years old. They come out with superior barrels, all this other stuff. It's not beating this gun. Uh, does it have potential to? Yeah, probably, and I'll experiment with that sometime down the road. But I'm not touching this gun the way it is. It's my best shooter, and the most disheartening, gut-wrenching thing I can do is to screw with it and then not be able to get it back to where it was. So, if you have a gun shooting well, just be happy with it. Don't be so turmoil to try to match what you see somebody else do. A lot of times when you see someone shoot a group online, it's the cherry picked. It's the best of them. And I'm not calling anyone out. I don't even have anyone in mind when I say that. But a lot of times when you see groups posted online, uh, you, you, are, you are taking their word for it. And it's best to consider the source. That's what I had always done in the past. Um, Harry from Australia, he posts something gospel the guy doesn't lie he's on the up and up with everything and uh this was a forum when i used to frequent forums he was a forum poster older man very friendly from australia and when he said something it was real you could take it out in the field and sure enough you see the same thing he saw some other people they just want to validate their choice and they want to do that by convincing you that theirs is the best gun or or setup or whatever i'm saying consider the source which is important for all information gathering, and, uh, and and don't be in such a hurry to scramble after the next hottest thing. If you're smiling and having fun, keep smiling, keep having fun. Don't go chasing after white rabbits. The superior barrel is showing me signs that it has the potential to dominate all of their barrels moving forward, but that will require a little more experimenting to really put a stamp on that. Uh, but looking at that, those data, that's pretty remarkable what that barrel's doing. That's it guys. See ya.